A very warm welcome to all of you to another lecture on this course on simulation of communication systems using MATLAB. So, till now we have covered the basics of MATLAB. We have looked at uh, some from we have looked at uh, the idea of spectral decomposition of a matrix and uh, its importance. We have looked at uh, matrix logarithms, matrix square roots and other matrix functions. So, now we will look at uh, another basic idea uh, from uh, ma linear algebra or matrix theory that is matrix inversion. So, all of us know that uh, a matrix X is called an inverse of a square matrix A if A x equals x A equals identity, fine. So, if A x equals x A equals identity then it is called the square matrix or this matrix is called the inverse of A. Now, high school we have done cofactor method of so we have looked at the cofactor method of uh, inverting a matrix and we know that in cofactor method of inverting a matrix what we do is we calculate cofactors of each element that is for an n times n matrix calculate the determinant of each of its by n sub matrices cofactor of this you might remember that the cofactor of a i j equals determinant of a hat i j where a hat i j is the matrix by ith row and jth column and uh, we will show or uh, we can argue we will not uh, directly show because we are already spending too much time on this discussion than I originally planned for that uh, calculating the determinant of n, n times n matrix involves order of n cube complex at least order of n cube complex multiplications. How we will leave that discussion for now. Calculating the determinant of an n cross n matrix involves order of n cube complex multiplications. So, for n, n minus 1 matrix involves order of n cube equations you have to repeat this this n squared times for n so you have to repeat this n squared times for n, n by n matrix which means that calculating 
the inverse of an n by n matrix involves order of n to the power 5 floating point operations. So, calculating the inverse of an n cross n matrix using the cofactor method method involves order of n floating point operations. Now, let us say that we use Gauss Jordan elimination for a matrix. So, Gauss Jordan elimination says that uh, or Gauss Jordan elimination is the way of solving this system of equations using or Ax equals b. So, Gauss Jordan elimination is actually solving the system of equations by elementary row operations on A such that by elementary row operations on the augmented matrix A B such that the equations reduce to the form i x equal c. So, you take this matrix A augmented matrix A B and uh, you do elementary row operations on it such that the first three columns become equivalent to the columns of the identity matrix and then you get this. So, x equals, so re you reduce this to a form x equals c and you solve this system of equations. This is a standard technique and this is called Gauss Jordan elimination. So, by Gauss Jordan elimination, it is shown that or it can be shown that via elementary row operations in Gauss Jordan elimination, you can solve a system of equations. So, via Gauss Jordan elimination system of equations solved in order of n square floating point operations. So, you can solve any system of equations in order of n squared floating point operations. That said, let us go back a couple of slides and look at this. So, the matrix inversion problem, so we can look at the matrix inversion problem again. The matrix inversion problem was that I want to find the matrix X such that A X equals identity or I want to find a matrix. So, let us say x equals x1 till xn. So, this matrix x will have n columns naturally. So, such that a x1 equals e1. So, e1 e i is the ith column the matrix and in general a x i e i. So, I can solve for a x i equals e i each e i. So, that will give me a corresponding x i to get a corresponding x i such that i and if I write these x 1, x 2, write these as columns. So, I will get E 1 
E n. So, I can solve these. So, I would say that can solve these n systems of equations to get x 1 till x n that constitute inverse of A. So, each system of equations requires uh, order of n squared uh, floating point operations and uh, there are n such system of equations that need to be solved. So, I require a total of order of order of n cube floating point operations to solve uh, these n systems of equations. So, uh, using Gauss Jordan elimination, I can find the inverse of a matrix using uh, order of n cube floating point operations. So, this is uh, what MATLAB generally does and so, I will just show this that I uh, will create a matrix A equals 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, this is a standard matrix 7, so this can be 3, 8, 9 as well, does not matter. I just need to check whether this is full rank. This is thankfully full rank. So, B equals inverse of A and this, this is what I get as B and B times A equals identity, A times B equals identity. So, B times A equals A times B equals identity which means that B is the inverse of A and naturally I can say that A times first column is the first column of identity, second column of identity and the third column of identity which is as expected. So, this is how we calculate the inverse of a matrix in A. So, the next thing we will talk about is uh, Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. So, Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization is that uh, obviously, let us uh, revisit a couple of definitions before we talk about this. So, we know that uh, columns of a matrix are called linearly independent when uh, you cannot express any of those columns as a linear combination of the other columns. But uh, linear independence does not imply orthogonality. Orthogonality does imply linear independence, but uh, linear independence does not imply orthogonality. So, what if we are given a matrix U with n linearly independent columns and we want make those columns So, or we want uh, an orthonormal representation for the columns of a matrix U. So, how do we do that? So, the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization is the procedure that needs to be followed over here. I am just uh, stating out the algorithm. So, we say that we will use U to get another matrix V we will use u to get another matrix v such that the first column of v is given like this that is a normalized version of u which is fine. For the second column we define w that subtracts the project. So, this thing this is the projection of the u i on v k. For the ith element, so k goes from 1 to i minus 1. So, all the columns of V that have an 
index smaller than i. So, we take all the columns of v that have an index smaller than i and remove that columns dependence on the or remove the ith columns dependence on all the previous columns. So, it is uh, by doing this we are uh, taking out any component that uh, the ith column might have on any of the previous columns of uh, v or any of the columns uh, of v that are that have an index lower than i. So, by doing this we are only left with something that cannot be expressed in terms of any of the other columns. So, linear independence says that any column cannot be expressed as a linear combination of all the other columns, but there might be a component which is parallel to the linear combination of all those columns. So, what we are doing is we are removing that component that is parallel to all the previous columns and we are taking it out. So, what we are left with is a component that is perpendicular to all those columns. So, wi essentially this step what it does is it removes all the components that are parallel to the previous columns of vi and we are left only with a component that is perpendicular to all the previous columns of v and then we normalize it. So, this is Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization. I have this time taken the liberty of uh, writing a MATLAB function beforehand, but what we will do is we will live comment this here. So, in order to make things simpler, so this is the of the function, this returns the matrix lowercase v and takes in the matrix u as the argument state. So, the first thing we do is uh, find out the size so, we first find out the size of u and S2, this tells the number of columns in u. So, and 0 is S, basically 0 is, in a, is an inbuilt MATLAB command, 0 is, say I say 0 is 1, so this gives me a 0, 0 is 2, this gives me a square 2 cross 2 matrix, say I want uh, 10 times 2, so I specify this and this gives me, so 0 is basically, uh, 0 constructs a matrix of the specified dimension. So, S is the specified dimension now, so V 0 is S, this constructs, constructs an all 0 matrix of the fight. this constructs an all zero matrix of the specified dimension or you can say or it or it initializes v so like earlier we define the first column of uh, v as the normalized version of the first column of u which is uh, fair and then for all the columns so we create a list as I said that for as we discussed in the definition of for we create a list. So, this i for i in 2 to n or i goes from 2 to n, we create this list i and we initialize w as u and then we keep on subtracting the projection of u on all the previous columns of y. So, for k goes from 1 to i same summation. So, we keep on subtracting this component of or we keep on subtracting the projection of ui onto the kth column of v. When we are done, we normalize v and uh, save it. So, this is the, let me add these comments. So, v. So, W columns and normalize end. 
So, this is uh, the Gram Schmidt code. So, we have defined another matrix A, we have defined the matrix A. So, let us use the Gram Schmidt orthogonalization procedure to get a orthonormal version of A. So, C equals So, this is the Gram Schmidt normalized version of uh, A. So, let us check if this is orthonormal C times C transpose and I get the identity matrix which means that so if I do C transpose I get this and I see inverse of C or C Hermitian. So, C Hermitian is same as the inverse of C which means that uh, this is a Hermitian symmetric matrix. This is valid for both real and complex valued matrices. So, let us try this for a complex valued matrix as well. So, let me define A or let me define A i as the imaginary part of A and A r let me say A r equals A, A i equals 2, 7, 9 arbitrary values. 12, 1, 12, 1, 4, 1, 10, 4, 5. This so for completeness, let us just check. So it is a full rank matrix. So A equals AR plus AI. I define a complex matrix sorry plus 1 i star. So, this adds two matrices I want a complex matrix. So, I get this complex matrix now what do I want to do? I want to so I want B as the or C as the Gram Schmidt version of this. So, C is the Gram Schmidt orthogonalized this. So, C equals or C Hermitian equals this which makes sense and C time inverse of C equals C Hermitian which is this. So, done. So, this is the Gram Schmidt orthogonalization procedure. So, we had used the term projection when we were talking about uh, Gram Schmidt orthogonalization. So, let us define a projection formally now. So, for vectors u and v, v Hermitian u, this thing or uh, the component of u in the direction of the unit vector v is called the of u called the projection of u and v and in general for a vector u and a space represented by a full column rank matrix A, this is the projection of, so this is, is the projection of u on the space spanned by this is a projection of u on a space spanned by A and if A is full rank in general the projection matrix would be I and uh, one important property of the projection matrix is projection of A or projection on A equals the power n. To prove this I have that A, A Hermitian A inverse A Hermitian. So, a, A Hermitian A inverse A Hermitian A inverse equals A, A Hermitian A inverse A Hermitian. So, P A equals P A to the power n which means that say that P, if I call define this P A perpendicular then P A into P A perpendicular will be P A into 
i minus p a equals p a minus p a equals 0. So, this p a perpendicular is orthogonal to a or p a perpendicular is the projection matrix for the space for the space orthogonal to a fine so this is uh, projection and the last thing that uh, we want to cover in this lecture are element wise operations in MATLAB. So, till now we have done operations that uh, involve matrix multiplication or uh, we that treat matrices as matrices, but we might also want to treat arrays as arrays. So, say let me define x equals 1, 2, 3, y equals 4, 6. So, I suppose I want to multiply this array, but say x square, if I use the x square or x y, I get an error because x into x is an illegal operation. Similarly, the matrix multiplication would not allow you for x into y. So, but I want individual elements of x and y to be multiplied, then I will simply write z equals x dot star y, which gives me an element wise multiplication of x and y. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, you get the element wise multiplication or you want the element wise square of x, you simply write x dot hat 2 and you get the element wise square of the elements of y, fine. And uh, here in this example in pasted in the slide, I have uh, multiplied two more matrices element wise. So, you can use these element wise operations to multiply matrices as well. So, that was all for our discussion with some results from linear algebra and their implementation in MATLAB. We will next discuss signals and uh, how do we deal with them directly in MATLAB. That will be in the next lecture. Thank you. Mm -hmm.